everybody. Welcome to another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. I'm Carolyn Topol, and I'm here with my amazing co-host, Rachel Arnett. I'm going to live up to that. <laughs> well, you know, you got to describe it as it is, and I'm just calling it as it is. Appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> you deserve it. Well, today, speaking of appreciation. Ooh, that was a good one. Good I segue, like that. good segue. <laughs> We're going to talk about how appreciative people were mm -hmm. of the finales of some of their favorite series because some series finales were outstanding. Some were amazing. Hit every note and they just leave you feeling really satisfied. Exactly. And, and then there are others. And then there were those that just were like, did I just fall off the precipice or what the heck happened? Where'd my show go? Yeah. What did that? just do there's sometimes where it feels like it's a whole different show Th that's or that, true yeah. or they just go in a completely different direction than makes sense for that character potentially and there's even one show i'm going to highlight that actually had two series finales mm. one a number of years ago and then one when they revisited the series and they gave it a different series finale which a little bit strange but for me was okay, but I'll fill you in on that yeah. when we get to it. Now, there's a timeliness for this episode. One of, as everybody knows, my favorite shows, which is like probably the only, one of the only shows I even watch on a network. I was going to say, it might any, be the only one you watch other than Jeopardy. Uh, yes, other than, Je excuse me, Jeopardy. In Jeopardy we trust. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, other than Jeopardy, This Is Us has been... It's not even a guilty pleasure. It's been a pleasure to watch. Mm -hmm. It's also been for me, which is makes it nice, a date night show mm -hmm. for my husband and I. And I think that's one of the other pieces of that. Well, I believe as of last week, and of course now we're taping in April, so you're visiting us a couple weeks later, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. um, as of this week, I believe there's like five episodes or six episodes left to the entire series. I, that's unbelievable to me, honestly. It, it's a show that they could have dragged out. Yes. I think most people now are happy when writer's rooms do not do that. There's the sense of like respecting the arc that people really appreciate yes. now because of what some shows in the past have done. Now, I know some things in the series because being a fan of it, I did read a little bit and watched interviews and things like that. Uh, Ryan Murphy. Mm -hmm who created This Is Us, truly did have an arc in mind, and it was either a four or five year arc, which is what they signed all the actors to, mm -hmm. and this was gonna be the contracts, because there was no leaving. And the arc basically held its own and stayed the same. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of direction changed due to some actor personal choices. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, to be honest, if I recall from the first season, that uh, the actress Chrissy Metz, mm -hmm. her intention was to lose some weight, and that did not happen. Mm -hmm. And they wanted um, to keep the character. And so, of course, yeah. rather than changing the actress, they changed her arc, I believe, somewhat. Mm -hmm. But that was it. I mean, other than that, most of the direction remained the same. Mm -hmm. They had an arc, they were going to start at point A and end at point Z, and they weren't going to try to extend to Z++++. Plus 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 plus. Yes, which some of, I would say, Ryan Murphy's previous series, I think Glee went a couple seasons too long. I loved Glee. I, I loved Glee. I agree. But the, the transition to the newer set of students really just didn't work as well, I think, as they initially intended. We had fallen in love with the main set of characters. Yes, we did. And some of them stayed, which was amazing, but it started to feel, even for Glee, a little contrived how some of the characters were still actively involved in the high school three years after they had graduated and were in New York, but also somehow in Ohio. Yeah. Just so didn't quite work. And those characters, uh, what they should have done was, the th and you know, when they could have had the same series finale, interestingly enough, if they had done it when those characters graduated. Yeah. The original characters so that was kind of the sad piece of that puzzle but they did bring it to a satisfying series finale i will yeah. say I agree. 
Well, this one I am anticipating to be outstanding because they are sticking to the plan that happened at the beginning. And I think also, in some ways, once you have superstars as your primary cast, you can't expect them to re-sign for a second contract. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that they all signed, I believe it's a five-year contract, is borderlines a miracle. I mean, you have Sterling well, K. Brown. Me. Who is now, I mean, he already was an incredible actor, but I think was lesser well-known right. versus some of the, I mean, Mandy Moore, who was singer and then actress. Although most people and my age say, was a singer. Emmy winner, <laughs> yes, Sterling Emmy, K. Brown. Yeah, yes, Emmy award winning, Sterling K. Brown. Right, right, right. Um, but that, that's what we talk about is I'm thinking, you know, you had this wonderful uh, group of stars. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only two people who weren't what I would call in the star bracket in the core cast were probably Justin Hartley, mm -hmm. who was a star of daytime, yep. primarily. Big on, hugely well-known in daytime, but not really well-known outside of that circle. Correct. Yep. And Chrissy Metz, who was basically completely unknown and mm -hmm. undiscovered, and they gave her a chance, and wow. Yeah. She I'm, shined. She shines, she sings, she acts, she does it. She does it all. And it's wonderful. So I look forward to seeing that series finale. Moving on, some of our favorites. Um, you want to just start with the obvious. Well, Go I for mean, it. so may not seem obvious coming from me, <laughs> um, but one of the series that I used to watch on reruns with my dad. Um, when well, I, I know younger, you didn't watch yeah, the original. Did not watch the you original. You weren't even a twinkle in daddy's was eye yet. not alive, no. This, <laughs> that conversation happens a lot on the show. Yeah. I wasn't alive yet, but I still like it. <laughs> um, MASH. Yeah. Just far and away, um, I remember watching it every day when it would come on on reruns with my dad. And I saw the finale actually years after I saw it. And I, I'm pretty sure I saw it when I was in college for the first time. Oh, that's Which is, I think, a pretty good age to really take that in that and understand ironic, it. But when it aired <laughs> the first time, I was in college and saw it uh, with my husband in his fraternity house. And you could hear a pin drop. Yeah. And... It just, for me, MASH was not a show that shined up a difficult, tough environment. And there was always amongst the comedy and amongst the little bits of romance and the little bit, the giggle, there was always the undercurrent of this was real. This is real. People are being hurt. These people are, people are dying. trying and sometimes failing to save lives of young people. And when the war ends or the conflict ends and they go home it it was almost jarring in a way even though you know you know it's coming the show was on longer than the korean conflict the lasted sh the show was on i believe 10 years longer than the korean yeah. it was only a two year conflict yeah it's only two years korean war was two years long yeah i believe the show was like 11 or 12 years long 11 11 I okay 11. there you go there you go i think so. and it just I don't know, seeing the goodbye in the stones, even just that picture when he's on the helicopter and you see goodbye written in the stones, like it just, yes, obviously that's for the characters on the show, but it also kind of felt like it was for the audience. I, I totally agree. And it was hard to say goodbye. That was yeah. what the character kept saying. And the show was, uh, if, for the three of you who may not know, goodbye, farewell, and amen. Yep. Um, every character leaves in just the right way for mm -hmm. that character. Brilliantly written. Um, Alan Alda led this cast, the entire series. Um, there aren't enough things to say about Alan Alda in TV in general. <laughs> but TV, especially on, on stage, that. but yes. Yeah. Um, I think without Alan Alda as the linchpin, I would say, for MASH, yeah. It may or may not have been as outstanding mm -hmm. because the characters in the movie, I, I would never have seen Donald Sutherland and Alan Alda play the same character no. successfully. No. I, I think Alan Alda just made it his own and in a way that worked and, and spoke to people. And was good for TV. Yeah. Because the movie MASH is not... Good for all it's TV. Not, it's just not. not. It's, yeah. it's a different kind of a piece. 
So I would say that the Supreme Series finale is MASH. Mm -hmm. um, we're starting at the top. If you have a disagreement, feel free to comment. Yeah. When you see us, us on YouTube, let us know. We will take it in. We will process. And we will <laughs> accept all opinions, mm -hmm. whether agree or disagree. It's always cool to do that. Yep. Now, I'm going to take one. That, there were two that I really, really liked the season series finales mm -hmm. of. Um, very different shows. Uh, one years ago on HBO was a series called Six Feet Under. Mm -hmm. It was about a family who literally owned a mortuary. Yep. And every show <laughs> yep. started with a person dying who would get involved in the family. And some of the ways people died were really funny which I kind of things come out of your it's mouth a is weird, a really bizarre. It's a weird thing to say, but it makes sense if you watch the show. <laughs> um, and it, was about, it really was about family dynamic mm -hmm. and family interactions. And this finale, um, by the way, the show was created by Alan Ball, who created a lot of very famous mm -hmm. pieces. Um, Six Feet Under's finale, the youngest in the family, who has a lot of central-themed personal issues that come up throughout the entire, I believe this was a six year series, mm -hmm. um, basically gets in her car and starts a cross country drive. And one by one, and it's not like she's not there for it, but one by one you see the core members of this family who you've been watching for mm -hmm. years and have gotten to know on a first name basis, mm -hmm. so to speak, you get to see in this 20-minute finale segment how each of them died. Which just fits the show. It's all about that, six yeah. feet under. Some in a tragic way, some beautifully elderly way. Mm -hmm. And you get to take that trip with her through her young life as the older members of her family go. And we see it, and it's... Really, it, it's almost like choreographed, like a mm -hmm. dance or so. the way they do it. It's just so beautiful and it makes sense. Which to me is always the key element. I think there are some series finales that don't trust the audience enough to get the show. That's right. Um, I struggled, for example, kind of in the opposite way with The End of Lost. I felt like the, oh, the series gosh. finale of Lost, while I understood what they were doing with this nebulous, like we're all back in a church, are they alive, are they dead? It's way too late for spoiler alerts. I'm sorry. I don't want to. <laughs> it, it just, it felt like we couldn't be trusted to f have an actual answer. And I know some people really enjoyed this, like, is it the afterlife or was it all just a dream? I felt like I wanted an answer and that answer was not given. You and it felt like satisfaction. There, I wanted satisfaction. I, I needed a little bit of direction from the writers as to how I was supposed to feel. And I would say the characters stayed true to themselves. So that part I, I was satisfied with. So that's good. But it was really just the, the literal way it ended with, more questions than answers for right. me, I really struggled with that because it was not a show that was going to come back and do a movie to wrap it all up, which is a thing now. Now there'll yes. be six seasons and a movie. Right, right. And the thing about one of the things that I, I was saying about Six Feet Under, while MASH was the penultimate mm -hmm. series finale, it was uh, the length of a feature film. Yes. Six Feet Under did it in the same time yeah. frame that they did the show. Um, which so, is hard. <laughs> so when I was sort of doing this little added, you know, I want to look it up, make sure I remember things correctly. One of the things I saw repeated in more than one uh, opinion statement mm -hmm. on various sites that do this uh, was that Six Feet Under's series finale was the gold standard for series finales because it ended a series. Yeah. It was part of the series. It made sense. And it just went right into it. Um, MASH was a standout. Mm -hmm. um, they also knew what MASH was. I mean, yeah. we were talking before the show started, yes. more viewers than the Super Bowl that year. 
you were talking about Arizona where oh my god there was <laughs> I, I believe it was a city or an area in Arizona and it was actually in the news that's how big this was I mean at that time I was uh, living in New York so either way I was a coast away from Arizona mm -hmm. it was in the news that because there was a power outage in Arizona that the uh, I don't know if it's the producers the student whoever is the powers that be mm -hmm actually repeated the show because the people in this city went berserk when they couldn't watch the finale of MASH. And as a viewer, I get it. I get it. This was before DVR. This was, this was yeah. This <laughs> what were you going to do if you didn't see it? Not only before DVR, but before people even had a VHS in their house. Yeah. So this was it. It was this or you waited six months for the rerun. And that was not going to fly. No. That, was not, that would not be nice. No. Because um, it was so impactful. The show was so impactful on so many mm -hmm. levels, politically, emotionally, moving television forward. Yep. So I think it was good that that happened. Um, I'm going to bounce a little bit, and we're going to go to one, like you said, with Lost, that was mm -hmm. not what I would call the satisfying ending. Mm -hmm. um, really negative ending was The Sopranos. It How was like all, could you be in it was a all anyone talked about for six months after the series finale was how much they hated it. People who I didn't even know watched The Sopranos, I knew all of a sudden they watched The Sopranos because they were mad the next day. Yes. They were just, everyone was upset. The Emmys made fun of how mad everyone was. Family Guy made fun of how mad everyone was. It was it, it just, just... I'm sure Saturday Night Live did. I don't remember it, but yeah, I'm sure probably, they did too. Probably. I mean, the show literally ended where out at a restaurant, Tony Soprano looks up to a guy who we think is going to take him out, but we don't know. What is that? Yeah. When at the same time, his daughter is coming to the restaurant. So at the tension is literally building in the scene with the music. They always used music beautifully. Yes, yes, they did. And it's building, and they start to play Journey, and everyone's like, okay, something's about to happen. And then right as you hear the door to the restaurant jingle, you don't know if it's the guys who are going to hurt him or his daughter, don't stop. And then the whole screen goes black, and that was it. <laughs> and for years, people did not have answers. And the fury of the fan base... Oh my gosh. And then years later, years later, uh, an interview was done with the show's creator, David Chase, mm -hmm. who actually revealed what his intention was, which I felt like saying, oh, come on, and you just couldn't do it. It's the series finale. You're not, it's not coming back. But his intention was, and I have a quote here, <laughs> yes, Tony gets whacked. <laughs> so you heard it here. Second. Not Which, first. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that an anti-hero was killed off on a show about them or a movie about them. I, I, I just wasn't, I as someone who understand. didn't really watch all of the show, but watched clips and kept up with it, it just didn't make a lot of sense to me that why there wasn't any answer. Yeah. I mean, if, if we see, you know, the, the bad guy walk through the door and we know what's going to happen and then it goes black. Okay, they don't want to show him being killed on being screen. Killed, that's fine. That's fine. Many other people were shown being killed, but not Tony. I get it. But to just have no definitive answer for so many years. Or to have, again, a clear, have it go black and then we hear the gunshot. Or something. That would have been enough. Mm -hmm. We got nothing. That was, that was a big disappointment. For a lot of people. And unnecessary. I think it was taking artistic license and drama in a stupid direction, to, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, stupid direction. Um, now I'm going to go back to something that I thought was a really odd ending. This is the odd, odd one. Uh, if any of you have seen Will and Grace, the first. <laughs> <laughs> Will and Grace Jr.? No. <laughs> <laughs> Will and Grace, the first time around, which, by the way, outstanding series. Mm -hmm. Outstanding series. Um, you know, Deborah Messing, Eric McCormick, they, Eric McCormick, I'm, a, I'm in, I'm yeah. in. Really great show, really funny, really creative. Um, Megan Mullally, oh my God, she could read me a phone book, I'd laugh my head off. Yeah. 
There really isn't anyone on the original series that I didn't even do. That I didn't even even the guest stars. Even John Cleese. Right, right, right. So good. Mini Driver. But so good. they had a really satisfying series finale. Mm -hmm. It was a little weird. Will and Grace had a fight. They separated for 20 years, reunited through their children who become mm -hmm. in love and get married. Really okay. sweet. Really great ending. Uh, Jack and Karen end up living with Rosario the maid. I mean, it's <laughs> hilarious. Really well done. What you would call the satisfying title and a nice little ribbon yeah. and, and put it in my brain for life. And then they brought the series back a few years ago, as some people might remember, and it lasted three seasons. Mm -hmm. They made a choice. They felt, yeah, okay, we wanted to revisit the show. There were some storylines we thought we could really enjoy, mm -hmm. so we're coming back. And they all agreed, original cast. Sadly, the actress who played Rosario passed away. Mm -hmm. So that happened then. But when we come back to them, it's like when you know when you're little and you wrote something and you knew you made a big mistake and you take the eraser and you go like this. That's kind of what they did with the series mm -hmm. finale. It sort yeah. of felt like that because that wasn't where they left off. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because it, you know, I follow comic books and in comic books that happens all the time, retconning. They change the end, completely change which character marries, which character, who their child is, like entire different alternate universes. But it's very much less common <laughs> with TV shows that were well-loved and series finales that were well And it well wasn't like sci-fi or no. time travel. This was your basic happen. sitcom. It didn't happen. Ignore it. Ignore it. Pretend that when we were on the air 10, 12, 15 years ago, it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. well, that that's a little hard to do. But I, I went with it. And the interesting thing was they did give it a satisfying second series finale. So that's not bad. Too satisfying. At least they were both satisfying. Can you imagine? If they had redone it and you were left like, oh, no. Now, one, to me, one of the most amusing parts of the second series finale is rather than the Karen, Jack, for me, actually, which was great, is Jack gets a Broadway show. Yep. I really like that. And loving the character of Karen, I found it incredibly amusing that although we didn't ever see him, ever, even in the second series they did, she marries her, her, her ex-husband Stan yeah. again. She and Who, Stan reunite. Stan. Stan. We never have seen him. Nope. We don't but see that Stan. But that fits. That and fits that, Karen. That worked. But yeah. that worked. That actually was amusing and entertaining. Mm -hmm. So while it was odd when they first came back, mm -hmm. As I grew into the second series, it was okay, and they gave a second series finale. In my opinion, some people will say, no, that was equally satisfying. That, worse things have happened. Yeah, exactly. Like, for example, the Sopranos season finale. Yes, <laughs> yes, much worse things. Speaking of worse things happening. <laughs> I'm going to go to one that I shared recently, just mm -hmm. uh, earlier today with Rachel, who she did not know the down low on this. Another 70s series piece uh, I'm sure many of you have seen in the umpteen bazillion repeats that it's gone through, The Brady Bunch. Mm -hmm. I've seen The Brady Bunch movie. <laughs> no. Sorry. Come along, there's a song we'll be singing. That's the Partridge family. That is the Partridge. See, that is how little I know about the Brady Bunch. <laughs> so it's the Brady Sunshine Bunch. Sunshine Day is the Brady Sunshine Bunch. Sunshine Day, that's right. Um, but Shelley Long did not star in the Brady Bunch, just no. for the record. Okay. <laughs> she I starred did. in the movies. Um, so here you have some really amazing talent, um, which included, as many of you know, is no big surprise and no big secret that Robert Reed, who played the dad, Mike, uh, when he actually got involved in the show, was appalled because he really thought it was going to be more delving into truly the family dynamic. He thought it was going to be more of a drama, didn't he? Than a... And if there was going to be a comedy, it would be like a mash comedy, where okay. it was sort of a dramedy, I guess, is what you, you know, I mean. Yeah. 
but MASH was a comedy, so I, I don't have to say that, but have more realism to it yeah. as opposed to the incredibly fluffy thing that he ended up in. I mean, because if you didn't know, Robert Reed was a Shakespearean actor. This was like horrifying to him, and he really felt like he just was, anyway, there was constant tension for years. It only built up, now not with the kids. He loved the kids, he mm -hmm. even took them on vacations. I mean, this was a really quality relationship. His daughter aired on the show once or That's twice awesome. as a guest star. He really loved the kids. He really, you know, it was the, the production and writing staff that he was an executive producer that he had issues with because I think he felt he was uh, not been given the truth when he signed on to do it. So one episode, the end of, I think it's season four, maybe it's five, I don't remember which, um, he chooses not to, he, he, he's basically told, I'm writing you out of this show because I know, because he, he complained about the entire script, he thought it was insane. Hmm. Turns out, which happened a lot back then, but not usually with a show that had that much viewership, mm -hmm. Uh, the network decided the ratings weren't where they used to be and just dropped the show. It was the end of the season and they weren't going to renew. And that was the last show. Some of the s actors weren't even told who came to work shortly thereafter and were basically said, oh no, your show's not on anymore. <laughs> like they pulled up to the studio and were sent away in their cars. Um, so not only do you not get a satisfying ending, that's one of those where it was like truly falling off a precipice. Where'd my show go? Yes, there, there are a couple of shows that I will never get over not having satisfying season finales or any season finale. Um, Pushing Daisies was a show yes. that was incredible. I honestly think that if the show was on now, it would be doing very well. It was just very ahead of its time as far as visuals, the quirkiness of the comedy, and it was the same. It just ended. It did. It, it just... just and, and some other shows, um, one of the shows I've mentioned in the past that I liked is Queer as Folk on mm -hmm. Showtime. Um, had wonderful growth for all the characters. And then in the very last episode and in the series finale, they literally backed one of the central characters all the way up. To the first episode. To the, like, to the first episode, yeah. basically. So there was no growth in a character that became a beloved character. So it was like really odd choices. And yeah. it was a series finale. It was just very odd choices. Um, there are so many more I could talk about, but I think we're gonna just have to do a part two at some point. What do you think? Ooh, yeah. Um, next time, Ooh. we're gonna talk about a really fun subject, and I'm hoping we will have a guest, but that I won't divulge yet. Um, about spin-offs, the good, the bad, and the ugly in that department too. Some shows that had great ones, good ones, and oh my God, what were they thinking? The wheels are already spinning. There you go. So, Rachel, thank you for another wonderful episode. My pleasure, always. And thank you all for joining us for Carolyn Talks Television. See you next time. <laughs>